Welcome. Good evening. This is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. And I was just talking to someone today about the, you know, particularly about pain, pain in the neck. And then I also have someone else that I spoke to today about um, gallbladder stones and uh, kidney stones, just various disease conditions. And what I want all of us to understand is that no matter what is showing up for you, whatever red flag that your body is sending to you to pay attention to, the underlying cause is the inflammatory reaction that's happening throughout your body. So the number one thing to do is to remove any harmful agents that you might be eating or being exposed to in your environment, ideally. You know, paying attention to what you're eating, what you're drinking. I encourage a lot of people out there to work with purified water, reverse osmosis, etc. No chlorine, fluoride is really hard on the gut, wears down the gut. Looking at your diet, like I said, and then also nutriating. So for example, um, Naomi had a question about her friend who has this neck pain, and she wanted to focus specifically on the pain in the neck. And, and I guess what I just want you to know, Naomi, is that the pain, her inflammation is happening all over. But in regards to pain, if we wanted to directly and radically stop pain in the body, one of the first things that I have had direct experience with and, and find really works for patients is doing what is referred to as an allergen-free diet. And what that means is not eating anything that you are allergic to. And most likely, number one and number two that most of us are allergic to, number one is, is gluten, which is found in wheat, flour, barley, rye, and spelt. And number two is lactose, which is in uh, cow milk. And cow milk seems to be the predominant lactose irritant. Um, I know people that might have lactose intolerances are able to eat sheep and goat. So if you just do that alone, you don't even nutriate, you just stop eating things that are offending your GI tract, your body's actually going to be able to dump a lot of water weight, and this huge inflammatory cascade that's happening is going to be able to stop. So for, and then, and then about the pain, you know, I love Arnica, it's an amazing product that you can pr buy anywhere in the world, and it uh, helps reduce the autoimmune response that's happening, it's, you can put it topically wherever you're hurting and you'll find it turn things around pretty quickly. There's also a product known as CM Cream that also has a, an amazing product in it that works in a different mechanism to reduce inflammation. So those are the things we'd want to look at. So Naomi, I definitely want to discuss more with your friend, but I know we did discuss a couple of ideas for her. And in regards, again, to pain, there's the reason that's happening is there's damage, and the body's shooting signals saying, hey, pay attention to me, and that's what you want to do. So there's an inflammatory response, the body's hyperinflamed, and there's been teardown. So at some point, for the example of the neck that we're discussing for this person, the body, for some reason, and that's individual for all of us, but for this person in particular, her body decided to kind of target the neck as the place for the inflammation and, and the responses that were happening system-wide in her body. And so her neck is what took a hit. Now, a lot of people, of course, we know, um, you know, they can have, you know, a car accident, something's precipitated it, right? You have a bad fall hiking down the mountain, you, you know, you tweak a knee. But think about it, that's where the weakness is. So if there's inflammation, you're, you already have, you're at a low level inflammation, now you have a knee that you tore out. The body's trying to repair that, but it's also a very porous area of the body because there's been injury. And what I mean by that is the injury has actually torn open some parts of your structure and now this dirty blood, this inflammatory blood, this inflamed blood, and this blood that has inflammatory markers in it can now coagulate in places and because of that it's just going to lead to more inflammation. And you're going to not be able to heal and that's probably going to become a weak point in your body. So Naomi, just real quick, do you know the history of the person that we're talking about? Did they have any sort of injury in their neck? Um, she, her husband was a, a vet, and they were big into horses and horse rides for, you know, a week at a time here and there, and I'm not sure, bar I think she did barrel racing and so on, so, you know, I, I'm not sure how the injury, you know, happened, but it could be years of, you know, horseback riding or whatever. That, yeah, that would make sense, and, um, 
So with someone in that situation, you know, I agree a thousand percent is reducing pain and it's, it's hard. So if you're in a really short pain, acute phase, I do recommend pain relievers, Vicodins, Oxycodones, Oxycontins, because pain is, uh, it needs to be stopped. And there's something really fascinating about pain I want everyone to understand. When we let it go and go and go, and we just let that, those neurons fire in pain, we actually do more damage to ourselves. So we do not want to live with pain. We want to find a way to block it. Tylenol, ibuprofen, like I mentioned, those other pain relievers, short-term use to stop that pain is appropriate because there's a whole cascade that happens. The body tenses, and we're talking about this inflammatory response, so we do want to stop that to some level, right? We want to curb the pain. And we also don't, we don't want pain to get completely out of control because then it takes a lot more medications to get it down. So when we get, when we have pain, we want to take a certain amount of drugs. We want to get the pain, you know, somewhere in the middle. And then we want to maintain whatever we're taking to keep that pain at a certain level. So I'm putting that out there for your friend with the neck pain. But I have a feeling for her, you know, following the, you know, getting on nutrition, making sure. I mean, she's got to be gluten-free. And that's something we got we to gotta look at. So real quick, I'd like to welcome a new person to our call. Her name is Teresa. And I know she's muted. She has um, pets in the background. Teresa, I'm really happy you're here tonight. And I know quite a bit about your story. And I'm going to share just a little bit so the other people on the line can know what's happened for you. Um, Teresa has lost her gallbladder through a surgery. Um, she has had some kidney stones. And she has very intense arthritis. And I know, I know I'm not remembering everything that's going on for her, but... It kind of gives you an overview. So with my team on this call, I said three things there. I said lost her gallbladder, intense arthritis, and the fact that she had kidney stones. And what I would like to do right now is open the floor to fellow team members. And I want you guys to just, I'm going to pick gallbladder, and I would like someone to share with Teresa what you know, what happens to your, what happens to your body when you lose a gallbladder. I appreciate your honesty, Naomi. It, it, yeah, it, it affects your body's ability to be able to process and absorb. Right. What absorb what, Rebecca? Nutrients. Yes. And right now we're talking about you know the gallbladder, but when we get into like kidney stones and arthritis, then it makes me want to think that maybe it's the calcium that it's not allowing the body to absorb, or the cofactors that allows your body to absorb the calcium. Yes, it's all tied in, so though everything's impacted. So it's not just that she can't absorb one particular mineral now, she's actually doesn't have what's one of the most important things for digestion, which is bile salts. And bile salts are amazing, they do so much for us. And what they do, one of the, they assist in digestion. They show up in the in the stomach area and the duodenum in the early part of the intestine, and they help you absorb cholesterol and all the good fatty molecules that promote brain health and skin health. Just an amazing, amazing compound are the bile acids, and then they follow you through your digestive tract, and then right before the bowel, right before the large intestine, the bile acids are reabsorbed. And then they're utilized again by the body. So it's very, it's an electromagnet, an electromagnetic current. They're part of that. And we were talking earlier about electromagnet magneticity and how important it is in the body. So when she got her gallbladder out, she all those bile salts were taken out because that's what the gallbladder does. And other enzymes too. It contributes to helping the pancreas do its job, right? So right off the bat, when that happened she lost her ability to absorb a took a significant hit in her ability to absorb nutrients in particular the fatty vitamins a d k right really important e those are big powerful antioxidants and that's that's a huge hit right there 
I've seen it a lot in the medical practice. They'll take your gallbladder out and they won't tell you anything about using digestive enzymes to repair and regenerate your body or to take digestive enzymes to help you replenish and replace what you've lost. Can't tell you guys how many times I'd be in the pharmacy, the patient would come in, they were having various other issues. We, I'd start talking to them, I'd find out some stories, and they, you know, they'd be like, yeah, I got my gallbladder taken out about four or five years ago, and now they're losing their hair. They are, you know, their skin health is poor. Um, you know, now the doc, you know, maybe they might go into ulcerative colitis or um, gastrointestinal. It doesn't matter, because guess what? They don't have the nutrients, so they're not able to repair and regenerate. And so I would say, hey, did, did your doctor tell you to take digestive enzymes? And they were like, no. Oh, here's my favorite line. My doc, why didn't my doctor tell me that? I, I hear that a lot. Why didn't my doctor tell me that? No offense to your doctor. Your doctor just didn't know, right? We all do the best we can. We all operate at the levels we can. Your doctors don't tell you these things because they don't know. But now you know. And now Teresa knows. So one of the first things, you know, I'm going to be working with Teresa and it's going to be an honor but one, I can guarantee you what we're going to have her on is some digestive enzymes, and she's going to need that to help her absorb her food. Another great thing about the digestive enzymes is that she can, um, when, you're looking, when you're getting ready to purchase and invest in a digestive enzyme, you want to make sure that you have one with ox bile. And the reason is ox bile is, is a bile salt. And so, especially for someone like her, she's really going to need ox bile in her enzymes. And that's for everyone out there. And if even if you have a gallbladder, box, bo ox bile helps you absorb those uh, more tricky hormones like estrogen and progesterone. So for a lot of us, you know, keeping our hormones clean is really important. So um, I recommend any digestive enzyme you invest in would have ox bile. And the company that I adore does have, their, their enzyme does have that as an, as an aside. So on that note, I'm going to briefly open the call to Rebecca, excuse me, to Teresa. And Teresa, I want you to ask me some direct questions about your condition. And, and I also really want my team to coach you a little bit. So go ahead and just share anything, maybe a question about what I shared or anything like that. Okay, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, so, uh, you were telling you were telling me not to have any more surgeries like that for for now, and the reasoning for for that is because your body's really weak and you're in major teardown, and everything that you had shared with me was repairable. You know, you, you, and I would encourage you to at least try nutrition before you let them cut on you again. Yeah, and this is, and this, this because I had my gallbladder taken out when I was 29, and now I'm almost 58, and so I'm just wondering, uh, does it get worse? You know, that uh, not being able to process the uh, absorb the nutrition, you know, like in there, does it get worse? It, as a person ages? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'll explain why. So at 29, you had certain things on board, right? You had a 29-year-old a body. And then as you weren't absorbing and you weren't absorbing, and so a lot of the repair and regeneration that would have been happening with a gallbladder and with proper nutrition and, of course, eating you know as clean as possible, that stuff wasn't happening, right? And your body was continuing to get yeah. worn wore down. That, so that's what happens. So do you think at that time I was ha having the symptoms of, you know, almost feeling like I wanted to faint? The, 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 um, that's all I was feel. That was that all pretty much I was feeling. And then, like I told you earlier today, my um, gallstone was... So it was made of cholesterol, right? And so it was like uh, around a, a, a dime size. And so, and it never had, it never wanted to pass. And that was a good thing because I heard that if they want, if um, these gallstones want to pass, then a person can have a sudden emergency, like me on the floor and, and, and vomiting and, and, and all that. But I never had that. So, so even though I was having those symptoms of like I, I, was feeling 
like I was wanting to faint. Uh, so could I have had my, could I still live with my gallbladder even though it was, was it, I don't know if, if it was. Yeah, you would have, you would have, if you would have known now what you, if you would have known then what you know now, definitely we, we could have done things to, to, to turn that around. But at this point, you we don't need to yeah. focus on that. We need to focus on no, where you. Don't. Yep, we need to focus on where you are today, and we're gonna focus on the solution of what we can do for you in 2017. And I know for yeah. a fact we're gonna a lot of things are gonna change for you. And ladies, it's I. Like and yeah. Just, and I was going to say, you know, just also you know saying you know that uh, for years I've been having acid reflux. Uh, and uh, I, I, I do have a hernia. Right, and that's why I want you, yeah, and so, you know, you, one of the things you do, Teresa, is you, is you keep listing all your symptoms, and I see a big connection between all of these. There's not a disconnect, yeah. so don't, it doesn't make you more special to have five more things that you're going to tell me about. You, you, you mentioned bunions earlier. That doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, and I was anemic. Um, last, right, last but do you, under, do you understand... You understand why that's not a surprise, right? Because you're you're nutrient deficient. Your body's wore down, so your body's busting butt just to keep you alive. So it's not a surprise that you have all these conditions right now, oh. right? And yeah. and you're going to continue to deteriorate. And if you don't do something now, this is like this moment in the fire. You know, you have to stop, drop, and roll. This is it. You have you you've probably listed ten to fifteen things already we to spoke previously yeah. guess what stop drop and roll you are going to have to dramatically change things on that note uh, Teresa I want to turn the call over to Rebecca and I want her to share with you how hard it was for her to get off of gluten and her journey with that that wasn't easy for her not easy at all um, especially living in a house where um, they are bread lovers. So uh, I myself, um, in, in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't believe it. You know, it's like God made wheat, but not in the form that it is today. Um, and just since I have stopped the gluten, it, I, I feel so much better. Even a year of taking the 90 for life nutrients. Um, I felt remarkable. After stopping the gluten, it's even better. Um, I don't get the stomach aches like I used to. Um, I would go back and forth between diarrhea and constipation, back and forth. Um, but since I've had the nutrition, I've, it's amazing how much better you feel just being regular. Um, and I had, you know, the aching joints, um, the headaches, the, um, I don't know that I had the acid reflux, but every once in a while I'd have where everything would get stuck, like a hiatal hernia, and uh, have to run, or else it would be all over the table, which is, I'm sorry, too much information. No, it's okay, That's Rebecca. I, I had that. Yeah, Rebecca, I want to clarify, actually. I think that's really important. So in a way, that is acid reflux. What you were, what I just heard you say is that you would feel like your food actually got stuck. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah it definitely. Was painful. Mm -hmm. Her body, okay. you know, when that's happening, she, what's happening is her body is literally saying, don't eat this. If you eat any more of this, I am going to eject it, right? So, again, these are signals. Everything that your body do, does, there's a reason for it. And if we pay attention to the signals early, you know, we can modify things. And if we don't, you know, then things get worse and worse. And then, you know, things really can raise their, rear their ugly head. Teresa, I just want you to know that there's amazing hope here on this call. There, everyone on this call has had a very positive experience just making these lifestyle changes. And... You know, none of us, we want you to succeed in whatever format that is. But I want you to understand that physical suffering is optional at this point. You know, in 2017, that is not how you have to live your life.
So I really want you to know that. And Rebecca is going to be a huge resource for you. Uh, Naomi's also on this call. And both of these ladies, and, and in Rebecca in particular, because I've known her healing journey a lot more. Rebecca, could you just share with her, um, you know, you didn't have arthritis per se, but in a way you did. You had all over aches and pains. Did they ever diagnose you with arthritis? Oh, yeah, head to toe. My MRI, when I, when I was 30 and I had uh, fallen and gotten two compression fractures, um, they did an MRI and sent me over to the University of Washington. And the doctor had walked in and turned around and walked back out. And when he came back in, he said, I'm sorry, but I thought for sure I was coming in to see somebody that was 65 to 70 years old. He said, you have so much inflammation and arthritis throughout your body head to toe. Said, there's no way I thought you were 30 years old. So yeah, I was diagnosed with arthritis. And at the time, that totally explained why I always hurt. You know, my kids wanted to go outside and play in the snow, and it, I just cringed at it because I ached so bad, especially in the cold weather. Wow. Teresa, do you have any questions for Rebecca? Well, um, maybe for the Rebecca was the one with the talking about the arthritis, right? And the, yes. Or the, okay. Um, you know, I had a when I I've had two I, I've had um, two hip replacements. Just had one in last October, and then one then prior to that, around five years before that. With my my first hip replacement, um, the the people there, the nurse and the doctor, uh, the expression on their expressions on their face I was just wondering why why my arthritis was the way it was and it and it, it looked like a step like a they said my my hip looked older than I did, you know, like seventy six mm -hmm. year old like like that. And so uh, so all this arthritis I'm getting all over my body, is it what is it just all because of inflammation or because I have I don't have um, RA at all but I have arthritis in my neck my my um, ankle my toes my fingers my back, so my Teresa neck. what's your question for Rebecca so my uh, actually there's not really there's not really yeah there's, there's there's no question at this time okay excellent so, Teresa, you sound you sound exactly how I how I was. And I thought I was doing all the right things. I mean, we had a garden. But the one thing I did not do is when I would do my garden, I wasn't putting nutrients back into the ground. So my food was probably nutrient deplete. And if we're buying it from the grocery store, it is as well. That's where the supplementation has made the world a difference with me. And how I feel. I mean, I feel like a totally different person, and it's been a year. And now I go, we bought a farm and our driveway, we have to walk up and down to get to the mailbox. And I can do it with no problem. A year ago, I couldn't even get in and out of my Jeep. Well, I'm, you know, I'm walking, I'm, I, I, I just don't even, I, I walk, I walk like I'm a, 75 year old right now I mean and I'm a dancer but you know I love to dance but, but it's just I I'm not as loose as, as I was but um, I was going to ask you so when you first started going on and you know uh, starting to take take care of yourself and um, uh, what was the first signs of relief or or that you felt like well, when I first started taking the supplementations, I had migraines. I also had a torn hip capsule, and I had um, five herniated discs. So with the herniated discs, I had the sharp pain that radiated into my arms and legs. Um, in addition to the aching, you know, I, I was able to control the aching with the homeopathic, but not the sharp radiating pain. Um, Migraines were the first thing to go. After, a week after my migraines quit, then I was able to move 
without having a, a sharp, sharp pain in my hip capsule. And then the, the everyday aching. I wasn't using anything for pain. Not the homeopathic, none of my herbal medicines that I create. I just didn't need them. And it, whenever, well, I haven't gone days without taking my new strength because I don't want to go back to having that pain. Um, but it, for you, since you've already had hip replacement, you really need to protect your bones because mm -hmm. this has opened up. And with that rod in there connecting everything, the digestive enzymes, which your body's absorbing all the nutrients, are key. And then making sure that you're intaking all those nutrients, especially the calcium, and magnesium, and zinc. All right, Rebecca, so you thank you. Thank you for problems. that. So I, I know we'll be to discussing more with Teresa, and we're getting ready to wrap up tonight. And I just wanted to make sure if there was anybody else on the call that had a quick last-minute question. Melissa, it's Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Um, okay. Is it okay if I share with Teresa that I've had 15 oh, thank you. I turned my life around by starting nutrition about 20-plus years ago and immediately got rid of fibromyalgia, horrid knee pain I've had for years, and it was after surgery to take care of the issues. I still had knee pain. Within three weeks, my fibromyalgia was gone. My my, I have herniated discs, I've had surgery in my neck, I, I've had lost uh, 10 inches of my large intestine, diverticulitis, you name it, I had it. And I vowed there was going to be no more surgeries. And when I started on nutrition, I've not had to have any more surgeries. So it really, really, really makes a difference when you start realizing that you are in charge of your body and that you can actually take care of it and help it and fix it with nutrition. That's beautiful, Naomi, and that is a perfect note for us to end tonight's call. I am so grateful all of you are here, and we will be back Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time. See you then. Good night.